Welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Podcast, hosted by CRM technology and sales process expert, Christopher Smith, talking with sales leaders that have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Listen to find out how the best of the best achieve success with their team and CRM technology. And remember, unless you are the lead dog, the view never changes. Welcome to another episode of Sales Lead Dog. Today I have joining me Jennifer Glass of Business Growth Strategies International. Jennifer, welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Thank you so much, Chris. It's great to be here. Oh, great to have you on the show. Today we are going to be talking about a keynote. Jennifer is a, a well-known speaker in her, in her area. Um, she does a lot of speaking engagements. And one of her keynote speeches is, does success equate to happiness? I love this topic. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I've got to talk to Jennifer about success and happiness and that connection. How'd you come up with this idea for this keynote address? So it really came out of a inquisitive mind, if you will. I started trying to figure out, well, what exactly is success? Because I know when I was younger, what I thought of success. I know where my clients think about success. I know what success normally means, right? I mean, to be successful, you've got all the money and the cars and the vacations and everything else. And then you realize people are still always chasing after that. And so... I started doing surveys amongst different groups just to get an idea. What exactly do you consider success? And how eventually that comes down to looking in the direction of happiness really became an interesting subject. And a lot of it also has to do with attitude. If you have the right attitude, you know where you're going, you're going to have that. And as we develop new sales leaders, it's really important to be looking at how you're going to be where you are today, looking where you want to be next week, next month, next year, five years and 10 years (coughs) down the road, because all of that is going to make a difference. And it's constantly moving that needle. And you have to realize that that needle is always moving with you. So if, when I'm formulating my definition of success, what should I be thinking about or what, what should my perspective be when I'm coming up with that definition? So it's really going to come down to what you have seen as successful people, right? I mean, is it okay if we do a really quick exercise um, that I do with my clients? So for everyone listening, I'm going to ask you to follow along, please. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to fast forward to when you're 90 years old or whatever advanced age that may be. And other than telling me I see an old man or an old lady full of white hair, bald, whatever, wrinkles, Um, tell me really who you are. In other words, what did you do in the 90 years that you have been on this earth? And I want you to really give that thought. Now, a lot of people are going to be thinking, well, I can't even get past tomorrow, let alone going to 90. (laughs) I hear that so often. But It's really important, though, if you think about it, and the reason I do that is because the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and what it sees. And so what you do when you start thinking, this is who I see when I'm 90, you start creating an image of that successful person when you're 90 years old, right? So whether you look back and you see you build companies and you trained thousands of people, you've been a major philanthropist, you've been uh, traveling all over the world, whatever it is that you're doing, all of these different ideas of 
who you think you are when you're 90 is now creating that mental image that your subconscious mind sees you at that age. And so when you're starting to develop that success image when you're 90, the more that you keep recreating that in the brain and you reinforce it, what you're doing is you're building neural synapses that will eventually get to that point to help you reach that. And so when you think about how you create your own success, think about where you are at 90 years old and what you considered a successful life, right? I mean, there's a, one of the news programs on Sunday mornings has a life well lived segment, which is all about what really made somebody stand out in their life. If you can say, I'm going to be on that program and you know where that success piece was, that's certainly one way that you can find your success. But people look at money, cars, houses, vacations, um, legacies, all of that as success as well. Yeah, so I, I remember when I was younger, I always wanted to be the person in charge. I wanted to be the manager or the vice president or the owner or whatever, because I thought that was what would make me happy that, you know, I would have more money, like you're saying, the money, the cars, vacations, whatever, the tangible things. But as I've aged, I've realized, you know, that's not reality. It's not, you don't understand when you're young what it really means to be in that seat. Um, so, you know, as a sales leader, and I'm trying to cult cultivate future sales leaders, how do I, uh, you know, adjust or uh, develop their mindsets in the appropriate way around their definition of success? And that's a great question. And it's really going to come down to what somebody sees today and what somebody sees tomorrow and next year, right? I mean, you said it yourself. When you were younger, you wanted to be the assistant manager, the manager, the director, the VP, president, whatever it is of your company. And at each stage, and each time we get promoted, we see that as some sort of success, right? We were successful in our past position, and so we got promoted to a new one. And so at each stage, we're always redefining what success means. But what we want to do is we want to though go back and we want to say, okay, fine. Now, if you are starting in a business, right? You're in the sales department, you're in the operations, marketing, whatever department you're in, right? Each department has its own definition of success based on the company's goals. And as you are creating your next generation of leaders, what you want to help them figure out is you want to help them really figure out what is it important to them, right? In olden days, it used to be somebody just wanted money. That was what was important. We've learned through the pandemic that money is not necessarily the pinnacle of what we have been seeking. However, it is still a driving force for many people. Recognition, though, has always been even more, um, many would argue, even more of a boost to somebody's productivity, somebody's success, when you can call them out and you can say, hey, this month's employee of the month was Chris. Why? Because Kristen, absolutely incredible job with this deal. In my personal experience, when I was uh, working at a university, and I even shocked the U.S. Post Office with the response rate for a mailing that we had, the president of the university was personally thanking me um, for the kind of response that we were getting. But did I see that as success? Well, I saw that as the campaign success, but not necessarily my, my own success, because my own success was still based on constantly moving up. Mm -hmm. And so it really is going to come down to what do you have in that regard in a sales department, right? Do I have a department goal that we want to reach, right? We want to get $5 million this quarter in sales. We want to get 100 new clients, whatever that is. 
as each of those salespeople are taking part of that, they are being a major contributor to the success or lack thereof of that department's success. And so success is really broken down into a number of different pieces in that regard. What were some of the key findings from your survey? Was there anything that surprised you in those findings? What really amazed me was that people were responding, having the ability to do what I want to do when I want to do it was one of those success factors that I really hadn't considered before. Um, I always knew having the luxury to do what I want to do is a luxury, right? For many people, we have our nine to five job, we have to go to it. And for some, we have a five to nine as well. But we've got our responsibilities that we have to do. Being successful and saying, I can do what I want to do when I want to do it, whether it is in their business or in life, that was kind of a out of left field in terms of my initial expectations, right? Whenever anyone goes into a survey, there's always a hypothesis you're always trying to prove and some of the expectations. And so that wasn't one of those expectations I had. Other people wanted to be published authors. That was what they considered success because at that point, they were at the position where they can say people wanted to hear what they had to say. It wasn't just that, oh, I'm looking at um, Warren Buffett as an example, right? Now, this person as a published author, people wanted to hear what they had to say as well. And so there's a couple of those surprises that came at me. But for the most part, the money, the cars, the vacations, the lifestyle, things along those lines, that definitely ha did have the lion's share mm. of the response. But then I also, again, like I said, um, had, it depends on what stage in life you're talking about. Right. Is it somebody who's starting out? Is it somebody mid-career, somebody who's reaching the end of their career, or somebody retired and... You, are you a parent? Are you single? Where are you in life? What's your circumstances? And that contributed as well in terms of the overall what is success and what is happiness. That's really fascinating to think about that, especially when you bring in the stage of life component. Because I'm thinking as a sales leader, um, you really need to get to know your team as individuals. You can't treat them all the same when it comes to defining what does success mean. Because you were saying we have the definition of success as the team, but that team's made up of individuals. And uh, so using some of those insights from your, your uh, survey, you know, some people want to have control over their own destiny. You know, um, other people want that recognition or their, that, that to be listened to, that, you know, that uh, I'm having an impact. You know, and, and uh, so being able to glean those insights from your team, I think would be a key part to be a successful leader. Would you agree with that or disagree? I would agree because the more that somebody is self-determined, it's going to help. But we also know that leadership that is unchecked and power that goes unchecked can lead to going down the wrong path as well. So again, even though somebody is self-driven, self-determined, it's a good factor and that's an important factor, but sometimes you just need to pull back on the spigot, if you will, a little bit right. and control how certain things do flow. Um, again, it's the morale of the team as well. If you have one person who's carrying 90% of the department's goal, and, you know, or, or think about a sports team, mm -hmm. right? One person is getting all the basket. One person is getting all the passes. The rest of the team is going to feel left out. And mm -hmm. so their morale is going to start going down as well. So not to make anybody feel negative or anything, because we all want to be surrounded by those great people. Right, but surround yourself by people who are going to be pulling you up, and that's where you want to be. 
if no. that makes sense. It does. Um, so if I have a team member and I'm talking about what their definition of success is, and they're telling me it's the money, the cars, the, uh, uh, the tangible things, what's your advice for the sales leaders that are having that type of an interaction with a team member? So when it comes down to that particular team member, a lot of what they're trying to get is going to be coming, like you said, from those tangible factors, right? So if I know that somebody's motivation is coming because they are the type that wants the money, then my motivation is going to be going to them through that, but it's going to be giving them the tools they need to get there. Right. The same like if you're going to be dealing with somebody who wants the recognition, the tools are going to be there, yeah. right? So if somebody is happy being the employee of the month, if you don't have an employee of the month program and somebody just wants the recognition, sometimes maybe it makes sense, create that employee of the month program because you know you're going to be driving people to want to do that, right? I mean, one of the best ways to even get people is, listen, I'm going to give you an all-expense-paid trip to the best person in the group to Vegas for the weekend, right? I mean, whatever it is, it's still a form of vacation success, right? I mean, you're being recognized for what you're doing. But it's also getting that recognition because the entire department is now going to strive even more next quarter, next year, whatever it is, to get that same trip. And so there's a lot of those things you can be doing to really make that happen. So as you're getting the survey results back and you're formulating your plan for this, for your, uh, uh, your keynote address, how did that develop or how did your presentation develop out of the survey? So the presentation developed basically through looking at where all of these different pieces intersect. Right, where success and happiness start to intersect. A lot of people start seeing success later in their years, right? During their working years, a lot of people were constantly chasing the next piece, right? So I started as someone in the mailroom and I got to the assistant manager on the floor. And then I got promoted to manager. Then I got promoted to director. Then I got promoted to VP of operations or sales or whatever. And then I got promoted to this. They're always seeking something else because it wasn't enough where they were. But where happiness really started coming in was when they started looking at different stages of life, right? If you look at the Nielsen categories as an example, right? Zero to 18, 18 to 25, 25 to uh, 30, 30 to 44, 45 to 59, 60 and up. You start seeing in those same buckets where people are seeing success as well, Hmm. right? When you see people move along, you're no longer chasing the same things you were. If you go back to your college days, your college days may have been a ton of success in terms of what you had. And you may not have seen the success in that time, but as you look back at your college days, you may realize how successful you actually were. Right. Right? So you may not see where that actual intersection is, but all of a sudden it hits you like boom. And you know, wait a second, I already was successful. So if I was successful, then I am successful. If I was happy, then I am happy. And now I can go back and have that success. But if you're still always chasing, that's not the happiness. And that's where the keynote started to really originate from. Um, When it comes to, so is the pursuit of success, is that hollow, a hollow pursuit in your opinion, or do you think there's value in pursuing success? 
So I'm going to get a little philosophical here. Go for it. Because um, I think that question requires going a little philosophical. Yeah. But if you think about where we are, we got put on this planet by God, creator, whatever your idea is, to do good for mankind, right? There's a saying in the High Holiday Prayers of uh, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and the Jewish holidays that says that God, a thousand years is like one day to God. And when you look at all of the greatest people, to God, the greatest people are still just a fleeting moment. But we're not looking at life or the history through God's eyes here. We're looking at it through human eyes. And so we know Albert Einstein. We know Newton. We know Bach. We know Mozart. We know these people, right? And was there trying to be successful really in um, a fruitless endeavor or was it something that really made them who they are? And so looking at it, if I wax philosophical for a moment, I would say, yes, it's still something that we need because we are going to be contributing to mankind's benefit. Now, does that mean if I'm selling this particular widget that that's going to be successful? You know what? It might be because you're giving me an opportunity as one of your clients to improve my lot in life, which then I can then improve other people because of the widget that you provided. Now, Chris, you provide CRMs, right? Yep. If I'm looking at your system and I can do my marketing, I can do my business better because your system is providing me a better mousetrap than anybody else has, then I'm going to be in a much better position in terms of looking at how can I make a difference and that's going to help your success as well. So while individual success and the pursuit of success may not be the loftiest goal, if you think about it in that regard, because we're supposed to be humble and all of that in terms of, well, we don't want to pat ourselves on the shoulder too much, right? But we still need to have that. And so when we combine our successes, that's where we really make a difference. And one of the things that I do in my coaching business is when I see my clients grow and they start helping their communities, that's success to me right. because as our communities get stronger, our nation gets stronger. Yeah. No, I love that. I, I agree with you that I think pursuit of, of uh, success is not hollow, you know, that uh, in some ways it gives us meaning. And I think the danger of just uh, of, uh, pursuit of success without context, that's, I think that's, the danger that if you don't have a context for your success, you know, that it's not just about the money or the cars. Um, you know, we, I had a guest on a previous episode, extremely successful, um, very, you know, participated in, uh, you know, early uh, employee at a company that had a huge IPO and they all made lots of money. And he found out when he got there, he was depressed. He was extremely unhappy. It, you know, it was a life unfulfilled and, uh, but he found his path, um, to exactly. his, his, his definition of success. And, and that's what it's all about. And, uh, so how do you advise people to find that path? You know, if they feel like, Hey, I'm drifting, I'm not really going to my definition of success. What, what's your recommendation or advice on how to find that path? So again, I'm going to go back to that exercise where you go back to your 90-year-old self, right? And that's why I start all of my coaching clients that way. I actually start my uh, keynote that way as well. Because when you can really see yourself as that success, when you're 90 years old, and one of the questions I ask normally is, tell me about your community life. 
right? Because when we are devoted to others, the service to others, right? Like the motto of Rotary, service above oneself. It is really when you are devoted to that in terms of what you're doing and you realize in your business, yes, you're in it to make money, right? I don't think anybody goes into business with the idea, I just want to make great buy, right? I don't think anybody really envisions that. But when we look at what we can do and what we can do in helping others, all of a sudden our success takes a totally different turn. And so that is what I would really strongly suggest people keep in mind is as you can see how you're going to be contributing to the overall good of mankind, that's going to be, first of all, the thing that keeps you in check. And it's going to be the thing that also allows you to really focus on the big picture, not the day-to-day granular pieces of I got to move this widget to over here and this switch to over there and what have you, right. it's going to be getting a lot better. Yep. And, you know, discussing leadership, what leadership really means with my guests on the podcast, many of them have remarked that their role, you know, they view their role to be a successful leader is through enabling and supporting and help grow um, all their team, you know, that's their definition of success. And uh, um, so it, I think that totally aligns with what you just said about, you know, really contributing and making mankind better, you know, that you're building your team, you're developing your team and, and uh, supporting them and helping them grow. I think that would be an incredible definition of success for any leader. Uh, would you agree or add anything to that? I absolutely agree. And if you think about the old saying, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, he eats for life, right? right? When you have a leader who's helping their team really develop their skills, whether it's sales, marketing, operations, again, whatever they're doing, you have that leader who is invested in their team and is giving of oneself to another that is definitely success. When you're working with your clients, and uh, do you ever have one that's just really resistant to embracing uh, what you're saying or your message? You're always going to have people who are questioning how something can really happen. I mean, it's just the, um, the skeptic side, if you will. Mm-hmm. Of all of us, I mean, we've all been through so many different um, get-rich-quick schemes and everything. I mean, if you look at your email, I'm sure right now you've got something in there from someone promising you that you won $3 billion or whatever it is, right? I know if I look at my email right now, I've got a whole junk mail box full of it. Well, I guarantee uh, you I've got 20 emails in there of people telling me that they're going to fill my lead funnel with all kinds of incredible prospects. Um, I exactly. Those, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, no matter how you're looking at it, it's just, it's crazy. It's an unfortunate truth. But, I mean, the more that you look at where you go and how you're getting there, it's going to make that difference without listening to those get-rich-quick people. Right. But for the clients, when you really show them what the math is. And you're saying, listen, I'm not telling you you're going to be getting even 10% in any area, right? But can you imagine, I mean, think about this for a second, right? Anyone who's out there and is currently getting 2% conversion on a landing page, right? If you can get that to 3% conversion instead, that's not a 1% conversion. That's a 50% increase That's right. in terms of what you're getting. And think about the difference that that can make, right? Is it that much more difficult if you have 100 people coming to your site to get one more person to say yes? 
So you see when a client looks at it from that perspective and they start seeing, well, you know what? I can actually make sense of this now. It's not like you're promising me ridiculous things, but you're telling me that this is completely realistic and you're showing me why. Yeah, they start um, opening up and paying attention then. That's awesome. Jennifer, we're coming up on our time here on Sales Lead Dog. This has been a great discussion. Um, if they want, if anyone that's listening wants to reach out and connect with you, if they want to learn more about business growth, uh, strategies international, what's the best way for them to do that? You can definitely go to my website, bgsicoaching.com, or reach out to me on social, vgenglass, T-H-E-J-E-N-N, -E right, two N's, G-L-A-S-S, -S, um, Facebook, uh, Insta, Twitter, you can reach me, find me on LinkedIn under Jennifer R. Glass. I'm happy to connect with you. Just let me know you heard me on the Sales Lead Dog podcast, and I will be happy to connect with you. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on Sales Lead Dog. Thank you so much for having me. As we end this discussion on Sales Lead Dog, be sure to subscribe to catch all our episodes. On social media, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Watch the videos on YouTube, and you can also find our episodes on our website at impellercrm.com forward slash sales lead dog. Sales lead dog is supported by Impeller CRM, delivering objectively better CRM for business, guaranteed.